in this example, we're going to have another type 2 discontinuity. Uh, so we're going to have a type 2 improper integral. But this time it's going to be an internal infinite discontinuity. So internal meaning that the vertical asymptote is going to be somewhere within the interval. Again, this looks like a somewhat normal integral, but we're going to have a problem where? So when x equals 1, we're going to end up with a vertical asymptote here because we're dividing by 0. So we're going to have a problem at x equals 1, and if you notice, that problem is between 0 and 3. So we're going to have a vertical asymptote, and <coughs> we can't just rewrite this using a single limit. Since we have a vertical asymptote, it's going to be an infinite discontinuity coming from both sides, so we're going to have to do what with this? We're going to have to split it up. We're going to have to write it as two separate limits. So we're going to approach one from the left, and we're going to approach one from the right, and we're going to evaluate both of these separately. So next we need to evaluate each of those integrals. And just like before, I'm going to go off to the side, and I'm actually going to do the indefinite integral here because we have the same integrand for both of them. And notice that I wrote it as x minus 1 to the negative 2 thirds. This is a, a really good trick. If you have something in the denominator, just use a negative exponent to move it to the numerator. And a lot of times when you do that, you'll just be able to use the power rule. So if you have something like 1 over x squared, rewrite it as x to the negative 2. If you have something 1 over something to the 2 thirds, you write it as that something to the negative 2 thirds. And then once we've done that, what can we use here to take the integral? Yeah, we can use the power rule. So we add 1 to the exponent. We add 1 to the exponent, and then we divide by the new <laughs> exponent. So if we divide by 1 third, that's the same thing as multiplying by 3. So this indefinite integral, the antiderivative is going to be this. And notice I put the plus c here because we're doing an indefinite integral. Uh, we won't need the plus c when we evaluate the definite integral. And now that I've found the antiderivative, what I'm going to do is evaluate the antiderivative from 0 to a here and from b to 3 here. So I'm going to rewrite this then. And this is going to be kind of a long line. But this integral here is going to be this antiderivative evaluated at, um, at a minus the antiderivative evaluated at 0. So I put a in to this here. I put 0 in here. I put 3 in here, and I put b in here. We have two terms that are approaching 0. This, as a approaches 1 from the left, and like I said, it doesn't matter if it approaches from the right or the left. This is going to approach 0. This is going to approach 0. So what we're left with are these constant terms here. And so 1 to the 1 third is going to be 1. So we're going to have, well, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Um, and so we're going to have 3 times the cube root of 2 here. And we end up with 3 plus 3 times the cube root of 2.